Welcome to News Click. In the last several occasions, we have been dealing with the issue of Indian defense and the government of India's repeated attempts to assure the Indian citizens that the military industrial sector will uh, move in the direction of indigenization and make the country self-reliant where military arsenal equipment is concerned to give our foreign policy a greater degree of freedom to maneuver, maneuver and operate. Now, in light of close relations that are developing between India and US, the question keeps on coming up as to how will close ties with the United States of America help India become self-reliant in military industrial uh, products. We have once again with us uh, a member of Delhi Science Forum and a defense analyst uh, with uh, NewsClick, D. Raghunandan. Raghu, welcome again. Uh, in the light of our, you know, uh, the, the meetings between India and US always throws up the issue of interoperability. And I raise the issue of interoperability uh, one, if you can explain to our viewers what it means and also what it entails. As, given that the Americans are pushing also India to buy more and more equipment of American make and they push the line of interoperability. So let's start with, can you explain what does interoperability mean and its implications? In military terms, interoperability means the ability of two uh, militaries uh, to be able to work together uh, in missions and to share facilities. Now, although this may not, strictly speaking, require both the militaries to have the same equipment. Mm. In modern warfare, which is increasingly network centric, uh, this would require being able to communicate with each other's forces, mm -hmm. being able to uh, share signals, uh, satellite information, positioning, etc which inevitably move in the direction of requiring the same uh, equipment or at least having the freedom to be able to mutually use each other's uh, equipment, which will be very rare. Mm -hmm. So the more network centric you get, the more you push towards the ability to share the technology systems. Mm -hmm. For example, if India flies Sukhoi jets, mm -hmm. There is no interoperability with the U.S. Uh, okay. services. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if the U.S. services want to deny you interoperability, it is easy to do because there is no sharing of, they can deny sharing of network uh, intelligence, signal sharing, satellite signals, etc., which means the interoperability goes. In any case, interoperability between two powers unequally matched, uh, with one possessing the technology and uh, products uh, and the other uh, being forced to buy equipment from abroad dependent on uh, foreign uh, original equipment manufacturers for products and for components and spare parts and all. It's not a, it's not a fair exchange or it's not an equal relationship. How does that impact? Um, let me put it this way. If you look at the relationship between the US and its NATO allies mm -hmm. uh, in Europe, uh, France may be using French origin aircraft mm -hmm. in their air force. The British might be using UK origin aircraft, but interoperability is ensured because uh, of the sharing of satellite signals. Aircraft and other such things will share uh, transponders will share communication devices, mm -hmm. software uh, for exchange. 
which the US would supply as required uh, to enable this sharing to be done. Uh, they would not do that, for example, with a country like India with very diverse equipment unless India agrees to a certain number of provisions mm -hmm. uh, then down the line. In order to encourage interoperability, there is no doubt that the US in this instance would be in a position to dictate terms as to the kinds of equipment, uh, etc. that you uh, use. Uh, but Raghu, given the recent experience of Turkey, which is a NATO ally and been a long time and has been a major uh, importer of US armaments, it was also connected uh, with US in developing, uh, be part Partly, as I mean, it was associated with development of F-35 also and invested money in that project. Now, the U.S. is threatening to impose sanctions and also they have stopped uh, and they have declared that they are not going to be parting with F-35 to That's Turkey. Right. Now, it, it's also a NATO ally. Yeah. So, there are, there are certain uh, red lines that the U.S. imposes. That's precisely my point. Hmm. Uh, if Turkey wants full interoperability with the U.S. Mm -hmm. and F-35s bought from the U.S. would have enabled mm -hmm. that, the U.S. now is blackmailing Turkey, uh, saying, since you are acquiring the S-400 mm -hmm. anti-missile systems from mm -hmm. Russia, mm -hmm. we will not risk sharing F-35 technologies because your S-400 through its radar systems will be able to monitor and uh, understand the technology systems of the F-35s. So we will not share that technology with you. So okay. either you give up the S-400, then we can talk about the F-35, otherwise we are denying. So immediately yeah. again, technology denial becomes uh, the issue and full interoperability is called into question if you are using technology platforms of other nations. Now, an interesting feature of this recent Indo-US um, meeting that took place in Washington between the foreign and defense ministers of India with the defense secretary and secretary of state of United States, uh, one of the major or a concrete thing that emerged from that was that India and United States concluded uh, uh, this uh, annexure yep. which uh, called industrial security annex that's right uh, that has been described as uh, facilitating now uh, a collaboration between us and indian companies as well as possibility for transfer of uh, i mean secure transfer that's of right. very important or key that's right. Technologies. That's right. How do you read that? Because this is part of the Defense Trade and Technology Initiative. Right. And in trade, in a previous interview with you, we had picked up, we had touched on this issue because the US had then announced that it is withdrawing from joint production of engines. And one of the reasons it cited was, amongst others, that the Indian party, partner, which is supposed to bring credible technology capability. Did not have that. Did not have that. Yeah. Now, given that now we have signed this industrial security annex, and we are now talking about transfer of key technologies uh, n now that this has been signed, w do you see the trade in technology initiative change its orientation and move back to joint production of, say, engines or anything? Uh, I think we should clear some misunderstandings mm. on this issue, which is uh, to a great extent caused by the Indian government's way of articulating uh, mm. different aspects of a uh, equipment acquisition process. Uh, bought out item is one. Mm. Uh, production of a technology domestically mm. which mm. is taken from another country mm. is the second mm. and the third is 
acquisition of technology know-how mm -hmm. along with like you said the earlier idea of joint development of technologies mm. like in engines mm. i think there is a great deal of confusion mm. in general commentary mm. in the media even among uh, industrial uh, specialists mm. uh, and of course of the government's concerned in confusing these different terms mm. for example it's often assumed that uh, if india establishes a production line for an original equipment from the us or europe this is tantamount to transfer of technology mm. it is not mm -hmm. india has been doing licensed production of french uh, equipment british equipment russian equipment for the past 50 plus years mm. but we have not acquired the know how and the technology to the extent that if india tomorrow wants to develop a new aircraft on its own it's unable to do so unless it does it completely indigenously mm. which is what we have done and start stages. from scratch you mean and start from scratch or start from what we know mm. uh so a licensed manufacturer or a joint manufacturer does not necessarily give you technological know how mm. and even more the next step is the capability to develop new technologies mm. so that's one mm. uh, aspect in the context of the 2 plus 2 arrangement and the industrial security mm. uh, assurance mm. if in the uh, fighter aircraft deal which is supposed to come up mm. 114 mm -hmm. there are two american aircraft on the cards mm. which are in the short list that's the uh, f16 yeah. now a more modified version they named the f21 yeah. or the fa18 Uh, hornets mm. if at all an assembly line for either of these two is going to be established in india india would need to sign some agreement of this nature with the us mm. to permit this and what this agreement actually says is to put boundaries on the uh, the nature of technology transfer and its done. use and of course the use of the equipment mm -hmm. you are going to manufacture then they will say you can manufacture but you cannot export you can manufacture but you cannot sell you can manufacture but you cannot share the know how with uh, somebody else that's one kind of uh, thing end use mm -hmm. uh, monitoring and the other is it will lay a boundary around what is the extent of the technology that they will transfer to you mm -hmm. for example Turkey has an assembly line for the F16s. Mm. If the Americans withdraw today from collaboration with Turkey, Turkey cannot manufacture its own F16s. It Correct. will not have those technologies because they have not been given. So they will be in the production line of the F16s if that comes to India or of the FA18. Elements of the aircraft which the americans don't want to share with you will be just given to you as a black box mm -hmm. say the engine you may not get to manufacture the engine at all the engines mm -hmm. will come to you in a box which you fit into the aircraft mm -hmm. that means you learn nothing about the engine similarly there will be various aircraft components which you will not uh, manufacture here but which will be supplied mm -hmm. uh, to you so all these uh, ways of closing in in fact it's very interesting you because uh, in the defense trade and technology initiative the recent talks it became very clear the americans have discarded joint production of engines and now pushing for sharing technology or joint production of components and parts see that's precisely again, what you said absolutely and let me again clarify you also have used this phrase joint production hmm. the talks that were going on earlier was joint development of engines yeah. mm -hmm. it's not joint production okay yeah joint development it yeah. is let's you and i work together and develop a new engine mm. and the americans were right in saying india does not have even that know how yet to say let us jointly develop mm. so the americans knew and were putting it down on paper that what you really want as for the americans to come and teach you how to 
develop engine mm. technology. We are mm. not going to do it. Mm. So the point I'm trying to make and I've been making throughout our discussions is mm. this belief that India has been propagating mm. and which it continues to propagate mm. through the Make in India programs, through the defense acquisition systems, that private sector will get involved with foreign OEMs which will bring in new technology and therefore we will enhance our technological mm. capability is a complete falsehood mm. and it's a myth because your private sector has no capability. So if a foreign OEM comes in to quote unquote share technology, which is not sharing, it will be done in such a way that any Indian firm will essentially be a subcontractor. Mm. They will agree to set up a uh, factory here. Mm. They will supply crucial components, which obviously you will have mm. no know-how about. Yeah. Then you will do a screwdriver job, manufacture less uh, important items, mm. and you will say made in India. Yeah. But there is no effective sharing of technology that takes place. And precisely that is what the Americans have now come down to say, okay, let us share technologies for making components, mm. which means you become part of the supply Global chain supply, for yeah. American uh, original equipment manufacturers. So you supply bits to, let's say, Lockheed Martin, which then Lockheed Martin can use. It gives you still no technology mm. know-how yeah. about the system as a whole. So therefore, let us be very clear. Mm. The more India goes down this path, of continued dependence on foreign uh, OEMs and particularly on the US, which has no history of even licensed productions of technologies outside of their extremely close military allies. Mm -hmm. The British, the French with whom we have collaborated over 60 mm. years do have such experience. We have taken on licensed production from them. We are still at the stage where we are only talking about license production right now mm. with the US, not even as far as we have gone with the European uh, partners. There is no way in which this is going to lead to technology transfer. Let's be clear about it. The maximum you will get out of it is a co-production agreement where you are the very obvious junior partner essentially doing screwdriver technology or small Subcomponents, mm. which are not the critical components, that's the extent to which that will go. There is no shortcut to self-reliance mm. other than actually developing that know-how yourself. Thank you, Raghu. This is all for today. Um, if you have any comments, I have any feedback, do let us know. Keep watching News Click. Thank <laughs> you.